Why are we going to Mars? It's not about going to Mars to visit once, but it is to make life multiplanetary um, so that we can expand the scope and scale of consciousness to better understand the nature of the universe and to ensure the long-term survival of civilization. In a bold recalibration of his interplanetary ambitions, Elon Musk has revealed that the once-anticipated mission to send SpaceX's Starship to Mars with the humanoid robot Optimus aboard, initially eyed for 2025, now stands only a slight chance of occurring by late 2026. Musk's reassessment comes amid mounting technical obstacles, including failed upper-stage landings, engine reliability woes, and the formidable challenge of in-space refueling. As a result, he now estimates the first uncrewed Starship mission could realistically take place around 2028, with a crewed counterpart likely around 2030. Musk's Revised Timeline Elon Musk's updated timeline represents both a setback and a strategic reframing of SpaceX's Mars program. While earlier statements hinted at an ambitious Mars flight as early as 2025, Musk recently acknowledged that such a schedule was overly optimistic. He now considers late 2026 the earliest slight chance for a mission, with a more realistic projection pointing toward an uncrewed flight in 2028 and a crewed one in 2030. One of the more surprising announcements involves Optimus, Tesla's humanoid robot. Musk envisions Optimus playing a critical role as the first passenger on Mars missions. Far from being a publicity stunt, the deployment of Optimus is intended as a proving ground for robotics in extraterrestrial environments. On Mars, human life will depend heavily on automation, from construction and maintenance to resource extraction, and Musk believes Optimus could pioneer that role. By sending a robot rather than human astronauts on the earliest Starship missions, SpaceX hopes to validate life support systems, cargo handling procedures, and long-duration spacecraft operations without putting lives at immediate risk. This shift underscores a central theme in Musk's vision. Mars settlement is not just about transportation, but about creating a sustainable foothold. The emphasis on robotics highlights his recognition that humanity's first years on Mars will hinge on machines preparing the environment before human settlers arrive. Well, at first, you would have to have a life support system because Mars has a low density atmosphere, only about 1% the density of Earth, and it's primarily CO2. Now, over time, you could, you can terraform Mars. Terraform means make it like Earth, essentially. And if you warm Mars up, you will, there's a bunch of frozen CO2 that will evaporate, densify the atmosphere, and um, you'd actually want kind of global warming on Mars. The technical hurdles facing Starship. Ambition aside, Musk's Mars goals remain tied to the enormous engineering challenges of Starship, the fully reusable launch system that underpins SpaceX's entire colonization program. While Starship has demonstrated promising milestones, its test flights have also revealed recurring problems. For instance, upper-stage landings have proven far more difficult than anticipated, with multiple failures highlighting how sensitive the vehicle is to heat, structural stresses, engine reliability, particularly with SpaceX's Raptor engines, remains another sticking point. A Mars mission requires dozens of these engines functioning flawlessly, both for launch and in-space maneuvers. Even a minor failure could compromise an interplanetary voyage. And the concept of in-space refueling, critical to reaching Mars, is still unproven. SpaceX envisions a network of tanker starships refueling one another in Earth orbit before embarking on deep space missions. But no company has yet successfully performed this at the necessary scale. Beyond propulsion and refueling, life support systems pose perhaps the most daunting hurdle. Musk's projection of a Mars settlement requires spacecraft capable of sustaining humans for a six to nine month journey through space, shielding them from radiation, recycling water and oxygen, and storing months of food. These technologies are only in early stages of testing, with many still theoretical. The sheer difficulty of solving these interconnected challenges explains why Musk has tempered expectations. While 2026 remains on the table rhetorically, the obstacles suggest a longer wait before Starship is truly Mars ready. So a concern is the same thing that makes a place on Mars interesting to explore, to get mud rock samples from and so on could be the same wide open place where you'd want to try your first landing. So you do not want to contaminate the interesting places with your human stuff. Why Mars? Musk's vision for a multi-planetary future. For Elon Musk, the push towards Mars is not simply a technological challenge, it's a philosophical and existential mission. 
He has long argued that humanity must become a multi-planetary species to ensure long-term survival. Earth, despite its abundance, faces potential threats ranging from climate change and overpopulation to asteroid impacts and global conflict. In Musk's view, establishing a self-sustaining city on Mars offers a kind of civilization insurance policy, a backup for humanity should catastrophe strike on Earth. Mars, among all planets in the solar system, presents the most plausible option. Its 24.6-hour day is similar to Earth's. Its polar ice caps hold water that can be mined, and its atmosphere, while thin and mostly carbon dioxide, could theoretically be harnessed for plant growth and fuel production. Musk envisions not just scientific outposts, but a thriving colony where hundreds of thousands of people could live, work, and even raise families. He frequently frames Mars colonization in sweeping terms, describing it as a great adventure akin to humanity's early voyages across oceans. By the mid-21st century, Musk imagines a self-sustaining city of one million people on Mars, complete with agriculture, industry, and governance. To many critics, this vision borders on science fiction, but for Musk, it's precisely this audacity that justifies SpaceX's bold experiments. Lessons from space colonization efforts so far While Musk's ambitions are unique in scale, the dream of colonizing Mars has deep roots in space exploration history. As early as the 50s, scientists like Werner von Braun proposed nuclear-powered rockets capable of ferrying crews to the Red Planet. NASA itself flirted with Mars plans in the decades after Apollo, but budget constraints and political headwinds consistently derailed them. More recently, government agencies and private ventures alike have floated Mars missions. NASA's Artemis program, though centered on the moon, is seen as a stepping stone for Mars exploration with tentative crewed mission penciled for the late 2030s. Other space agencies, including Roscosmos and the China National Space Administration, CNSA, have also announced Mars ambitions. But none has presented as concrete or as aggressive a roadmap as Musk. SpaceX's approach also diverges sharply from traditional government programs. Where NASA relies on incremental progress and long development cycles, Musk embraces rapid prototyping and iterative testing, accepting high-profile failures as the price of accelerated learning. This Silicon Valley-inspired approach has already reshaped the aerospace industry, making reusable rockets a reality. The question is whether the same strategy can overcome the far greater obstacles of interplanetary travel. Funding the Mars Dream Beyond rockets and engineering, one of the most pressing questions is how Musk intends to fund a Mars settlement. SpaceX, though privately held, has grown into one of the most valuable aerospace companies in the world, with contracts from NASA, the U.S. Department of Defense, and numerous satellite operators. Much of its near-term revenue comes from the Falcon 9 launch vehicle and increasingly from Starlink, the global internet constellation designed to provide low-cost broadband to underserved regions. Musk has openly acknowledged that Mars colonization will be staggeringly expensive, trillions of dollars over the long term. He argues that Starlink could become the primary funding engine generating steady cash flow to bankroll Starship launches. Each Starship flight, if reusability goals are met, could eventually cost less than $10 million per launch, a dramatic reduction compared to legacy rockets that cost hundreds of millions. But critics question whether this financial model is sustainable. Starlink, while promising, faces regulatory battles, satellite competition, and high infrastructure costs. And the idea that millions of Earth's citizens would be willing or able to pay for a ticket to Mars remains speculative. Musk has floated the possibility of financing settlers through loans similar to historical precedents like passage scholarships during the colonization of the New World. But the economics of building and maintaining a city on another planet remain profoundly uncertain. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think we'll ever colonize Mars? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.